What's it like to play a PGA Tournament course from the Championship Tees? Welcome to the Pete Dye Design PGA West Stadium course. In today's video, I'm going to take you shot by shot on the back nine as we play the host course of the PGA Tours American Express Championship. We'll start here on the 10th hole, a beautiful 416 yard par 4 featuring a large water hazard to the left of the fairway. As you'll see throughout today's video, I play a draw and manage to hit a good tee shot up the left side. I didn't realize how close I came to the water hazard off the tee, but nonetheless, I'm in prime position to attack and have just 105 yards in for my approach shot. I hit a solid wedge shot here and will have a great look at an opening birdie. The views in Palm Springs are breathtaking and I'm feeling quite confident over the ball here. I managed to put a great stroke on this putt and thought I had it. It was a solid attempt and a good par to start the round. The 11th hole is nicknamed Eternity and plays 617 yards from the championship tee. This is pretty much a free swing as this fairway is extremely wide. I make another committed swing here and find the middle of the fairway. I have 300 yards left to the green so this most definitely will be a layup shot. I hit my 5 iron and pulled it well left of my target. Originally, I thought I was going to be flirting with the water hazard to the left, but was actually well short of it. As I set up to hit this shot, notice how the ball is significantly below my feet. You might notice that I have a very awkward stance. For me, I put my right foot behind and that gives me a little bit more balance on the slope and you can see how I'm able to accelerate through and make another committed shot. This putt is actually very fast and let's call it about 20 feet left for birdie and again I put another very solid stroke here and just slightly misread it but again it's another tap in par. The stadium course plays 7300 yards from the championship tees but every long course has a few short holes. This is the 12th hole only playing 363 yards and in my opinion this is where you really have to be aggressive and you really want to make your good scores on these short holes. I've taken a 3 wood here and made another committed swing and find the center of the fairway. As I set up to hit this shot notice how the ball is again above my feet and this is something that you have to deal with on these championship courses undulated lies in the fairway. As you can see I'm aiming a little bit right of the pin and managed to make another committed swing and have just about seven feet left for birdie. We've hit a great approach shot and this is a very makeable look at birdie. However, you can see from this camera angle that this putt breaks severely right to left and unfortunately I just never had enough break on this putt and as soon as I hit it, it breaks left of the hole and it never really had a chance of going in. Disappointing attempt, but another tap in par. The 13th hole is a 214 yard par 3 and this is a very classic Pete Dye designed par 3 with a water hazard in front. Now this pin was back left playing approximately 225 yards. That would normally be a 4 iron for me, but unfortunately my 4 iron broke before this trip, so I'm using a 5 iron here. Now as a result I'm not going to be aiming for this pin, but instead I'm going to be aiming for the front right portion of the green. I make another committed swing here and place it just in front of the green. Managing your misses is a skill that is really needed to shoot great scores and this was really a classic example. I knew that I could not get to this back left pin position as I only had a 5 iron in my bag but I basically left it in the easiest portion of the course to get up and down. I'm just in front of the green and this is a very standard chip. Actually it's not very difficult at all and I managed to take my 54 degree and just chip it to about 18 inches. It was a very solid way to manage this golf hole and again another easy par. We've started the round with four successful pars and again we find ourselves on the 14th hole. A short par 4, only 389 yards and again I want to be aggressive here and I want to try to make a birdie here and I need another solid tee shot here. Unfortunately I get a little bit stuck on the inside and end up blocking this shot well right of the fairway and now I'm in the middle of a hazard. As you can see by the foot marks in the bunker, I was actually between clubs here, going between a gap wedge and a pitching wedge. I had about 120 yards left, and this is a completely blind shot to the green, but I decided to go with the pitching wedge and managed to hit a great solid fairway bunker shot here. 
and now I've left myself a very difficult up and down here. As you can see in my practice strokes, what I'm working on is really making sure that I accelerate through the ball here. This is the most common mistake that most amateurs make is that they decel, and I've picked a landing spot just on the front portion of the green, and I managed to accelerate and hit that exact target. The ball releases, and wow, my first birdie of the day does not come with the flat stick, but instead a chip in off the green here on the 14th hole. We're down to the final four holes and here we are standing atop the 15th hole. This is a 468 yard par four. And again, another free swing here as this fairway is very large. And I managed to hit a great tee shot here, pulling it a little bit left of my target, but nonetheless finding the fairway. I have 175 yards left for my approach shot and I'm hitting just a nice smooth seven iron here. Unfortunately, I don't make a very committed swing and actually pull a Hideki Matsuyama, letting go of the club and completely dropping it in the follow through. But also like Hideki Matsuyama, I actually stiff this <laughs> right next to the pin, even laughing afterwards <laughs> on the result from that terrible golf swing. Here we are on the 15th green. I've just got about eight feet left for my birdie. And although I hadn't make a good putt, I tried my best, but really this was probably one of my worst strokes. And a little bit of frustration is coming out here as I just, again, wasted a really good opportunity there. But you can never be too disappointed with tap-in pars. Well, everybody, we've been playing pretty darn good. I wish I could have made a few more putts, and that really shows you the difference between a PGA Tour player and just a regular you know, club professional like myself. But we're standing atop the 16th hole. This is a 610-yard par five. This is one of the highest points on the golf course. Absolutely stunning view here. This is called San Andreas Fault. They have really unique nicknames for every one of the holes here. And this is home to one of the most famous bunkers in all of golf. It's near the green complex, but let's go ahead and hit our tee shot and see how we do on this monster par five. This is another free swing on the 16th hole as it once again is over 600 yards. And I managed to hit my patented draw right down the middle and we're in prime position on this par five. We're just under 300 yards, so I've decided to hit a hybrid here and try to get it as close as I can to the green. Unfortunately, I hit this one quite fat, but it's a very good miss as it basically just goes straight down the fairway. And nonetheless, I'll still have a wedge shot in for my approach. And I've got about just over 90 yards left, and I decide to try to fly it all the way in the back portion of that green. Unfortunately, the ball came off just a little bit right of my target and now I'm gonna be in a tough position trying to get up and down for par. So here we are in a similar position that we were just two holes ago. It's a very similar shot, and remember what I told you, you have to make sure that you accelerate through. Despite the fact that I know this, I did the exact opposite and completely decelerate, and now I've left myself a challenging 12-footer for my par. However, this is where a really strong mental game comes into play, because no matter how bad a chip I hit, the first thing I tell myself is that if I can commit to making this putt and I put a good stroke on it, it still counts as an up and down. Well, our short game has saved us today. We've successfully made a par on that long par five. And now we're coming up to one of the most famous holes on the PGA Tour. This is a little plaque here for Lee Trevino who made a ace here in 1987 during the skins game worth $175,000. And let's go ahead and step up here and see where the tournament tees are. Wow, this is fantastic. And this is called Alcatraz Island Green. Now, all of us know the Island Green from TPC Sawgrass, which is in Florida, my home state. This is, this is stunning. Wow, this is beautiful. 192 yards into the wind, I've decided to hit a five iron and managed to make my best swing of the day, going right at the flag and just flying it. And I'm gonna be in the back portion of the green with a very makeable chance at birdie. Well, we've hit it a little bit long here, but you can see my direction was spot on. I'm just past the pin here. And again, I've played the 17th at Sawgrass. I would honestly say, the 17th green of Sawgrass would probably be double this size. Easily would be double this size. I mean, this is actually a very small green. Considering how much longer it is, you can see my ball mark here. Five iron definitely was the, was the play there. Pretty solid there. Oh, it's a very committed swing on probably the most intimidating shot. Only thing better will be when I make this birdie. Let's do it. Remembering the confident stroke I made on the pass hole, I set up over this putt feeling very confident that I can make a birdie on the PGA West Stadium Course signature hole. I managed to hit a great stroke and it almost goes in and just rolls over that left edge. I thought I had it at the end, but I will always take a par on a difficult par three. Yeah, thought I had that.
We've made it to the final hole, which again is a very challenging tee shot here. Water goes up the complete left side of the fairway all the way to the green, and it's imperative that you do not miss it left. And that's exactly what I did here. I actually felt that I sliced this up really far to the right. Actually, it was just a bit of a cut off the tee, and it's actually left me in a great position in the right portion of the fairway. I had 165 yards in left from my approach, and I'm feeling a little bit nervous here as I really want to finish this round off good. As you can see, I'm aiming significantly right. I do not want to be missing it in the water. And again, I make another swing that really takes the water out of play. It was a really solid strike here, but it just started drifting a little bit right of my target. And now I'm going to be left with a very difficult up and down from the greenside bunker. We've made it to the 18th green, and we now have a chance to get up and down to shoot one under on the back nine here. And you can notice the awkward stance that I have here. Again, what you need to focus on here is finding a position that feels comfortable for you. You can notice how I turn my right foot in, my left knee is actually squatting, and I make another solid committed swing, hit the top of the ridge, and actually just bounce down, and I'm feeling very confident as I've got a good chance at saving par. There's nothing like finishing a round out by making a solid par here. I have just over three and a half feet left and managed to make a very committed stroke, find the center of the cup, and that is a round of 35 on the back nine. Everyone, thank you for watching today's video. We had a lot of highlights out there. A lot of good tee shots, a lot of greens in regulation, some chip-ins from off the green, some nice up and downs. Overall, it was a great round. I certainly wish I could have putted better, but that is the game that we play. And thank you all for joining me on this wonderful tour of the beautiful PGA West Stadium Course in La Quinta, California. Make sure you like, subscribe, and drop me a comment. And I'll see you soon in another video.